and welcome back to what might be a very spicy blame game. The weekend saw every undefeated team this weekend take an L. However, one team took more criticism than the others. Team Liquid nearly lost both their games and fans came for the bot lane's head. Now, I'm someone myself who has chirped about is Core JJ overrated recently when comparing his and Vulcan's recent splits and achievements. Fans seem to be picking up on this sentiment as well, believing that he's not as criticized as some of the supports in the leagues are, and they took this poor weekend by Team Liquid to pounce. But was it as bad as they think? Hans also caught some strays here, so we'll talk about the bot lane as a whole. Things start pretty poorly in the 2v2 for Core JJ and Hans versus TSM. It's a tough lane matchup, and there is a little miscommunication here where Core JJ steps up to body block the handshake while Hans flashes away, burning more summoners than necessary. This is actually smart in the sense that Ez needs summoners more than Bard does to lane 1v2 when Bard goes and roams, but Core JJ was just being greedy here and could have flashed earlier and avoided taking some extra autos that got him killed. Just a minute later, TSM has a freeze on the bot lane and Core and Santorin set up a play to break the freeze and go one for one. Technically a good trade, AD for support and fixing the wave, though most people just see the two deaths for Core. He also makes another pick happen onto Tactical with Santorin a little bit later on in the game. They try a third time, but the coordination is off. I blame Core JJ here for ulting a turret when he has a volley bear on his team, which is kind of dumb, but the play ultimately fails because the turret rando targets Ezreal when it turns back on, and both Santorin and Core JJ panic and don't finish the dive. Someone should have at least last hit Mia here. One of the things they both got flamed for is their skill shot accuracy, and you won't really find a defense here. Mia in particular was breaking their ankles all game thanks to some smart Swifty boots that he bought, and his sides to death in this river skirmish is the entire reason that the fight could be kited out as much as it was, though it wasn't like Core aiming behind the brush was a terrible idea, it was just not maybe centered as well as it could be and a nice adaptation by Mia. Before we go any further though, I wanna take a look at what the rest of Team Liquid was doing pre 20 minutes. So editor, go ahead and roll those highlights. What do you mean there aren't? You mean all the positive plays happened in the bot lane with Santorin? What about the fifth pick counter pick Olaf into the NAR matchup? It lost all turret plates and went even in CS? Interesting. This draft by Team Liquid is a bit of a disaster. While technically top doesn't lose, it's three pushing lanes for TSM and a jungler who's able to go invade and make the most of that. Bika did a good job abusing that and controlling some of Santorin's camps and getting Vision out. The Volley and Bard in theory should go top to help blow that lane open, but they never actually ganked for it. It's possible that Core JJ or Hans got tunnel vision about ganking bot lane over and over again, but without knowing the comms, that easily could have been Bwipo or Santorin or Bjergsen fault as well. Even though Team Liquid ends up losing Baron pretty early on in this game, they managed to keep the gold lead close thanks to some superior macro. 25 minutes in, they're only a little bit behind. Hans got a lot of shit for not flashing the Renata ult, but Whippo's greedy path starts a fight that TL is not in position for, as they have to bum rush through a choke point to get to him. During this, Huni has a perfect TP onto this minion because he's Mininar as he's channeling, then insta transform when he arrives. Even if a Team Liquid member checked the minimap to see his icon, it would be as Mininar. And you wouldn't know his rage unless you actually scrolled to look at him. Despite this, Han still reacts appropriately and buffers his Ez E to cancel the NAR displacement. Here's where the Reddit plebs are kind of showing their true colors. The NAR airborne status effect is still on him, and the only way to flash would have been to QSS or cleanse it and then flash. There are a couple frames here where if he was spamming flash, he might have gotten out before the berserk status hit but honestly, he was basically chain CC'd to death. The other people also didn't flash, but they didn't really need to. As you can see, they just end up walking out of the fight despite getting hit by this big Renata ult. In the second no flash team fight, Mia does a really heads up R flash to reposition the edges of the ultimate. Math time, nerds. Renata's ultimate is a 500 unit with ability with edge to edge calculations. Ezreal's hitbox is 65 units, and Ezreal's arcane shift is 475, which means that there's a very limited range given the offset of Renata post flash and the angle of her ultimate, in which Ezreal would not get hit by this ability. Hans buffered his E again, which locks you out of flashing, during which time Mia does his flash reposition. Basically, Ez is almost guaranteed to get hit unless you insta-flash, and as he only had a couple of frames before he was berserk, it's pretty understandable that he gets hit here. From there, it's another chain CC to death to the flanking Spica. 
Yes, technically Han Sama had windows to flash these abilities, but it wasn't like a Gragas ultimate flying at his face that he just didn't react to. If you want to flame anything, flame the three-man position being this far forward after Spica flanking on this pink ward, and Beer clearly not being ready to TP into a fight, given that Hans was dead before he finally showed up. So, to recap this terrible game by Team Liquid's bot lane, Hor and Hans admittedly had one bad death in lane, but then were still able to be the only proactive point on the map through the early mid game for Team Liquid, playing into one of the strongest lanes in the meta. They didn't play out some already bad situations perfectly. They had some bad skill shot accuracy, but honestly, every top player in every sport in the world has that game where they're just running cold. They didn't chain die, and there weren't any absolutely disgusting decisions made where you couldn't even understand what they were looking for. Let's take a look at game two and see how bad that one is. It opens with Santorin getting killed in river by Afromu jumping the play, which the jungler says in Proto Pro was because his bot lane didn't say that Afro could be moving. Tell me about so, so, so I'm surprised because, you know, we didn't really call that Rakan is moving first. Um, oh. I'm, I'm, so I should also flash out with the second W is here. That was a mistake. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, but Santorin also admits that he griefed the play a little by holding on to his sums too long and baiting his team into this fight, which feeds double buffs over to the Twitch. Kor also doesn't bail on the play early enough and feeds a second kill over. Despite this, the TL bot lane later gets a one for one, almost a double kill, while drawing the jungler attention bottom. On the flip side of the map, Blippo goes one for one in a turret dive with jungler help because he poorly positions his ultimate too far forward and then doesn't wait for Santorin to take the turret aggro, allowing Philip to flash on top of him and kill him. Even if you think that Blippo should take the turret aggro because he has flash and Santorin doesn't, well, he doesn't react to Philip flashing on top of him. What were those criticisms of Hansama again? The only other good plays the team really makes are Core JJ successfully baiting a fight here, a collapse to protect Bjergsen up in the top lane here, and finally the sick nasty pink by Core JJ to spot out the rat on a flank, and then alt the counter engage by Rakan knocking him up and making sure they can win this team fight. The rest of the game is a complete comedy of errors where nearly everyone on Team Liquid does some shit. Ans gets picked, Whippo tries to run through Philip to get to his team, which causes them to lose the Herald, Beard gets picked, Beer gets picked again. Hans gets double stealth engaged on. Core JJ steps too far forward trying to bait a fight. Beer cosplays a fiddlesticks effigy at red buff. Whipple gets picked and Hans gets picked again. So after two games of hindsight analysis, where does that leave us? It's clear that Core JJ and Hans Sama did not have good weekends. Hans a little more so. To be honest though, neither were particularly terrible, especially compared to what constitutes a bad weekend here in the LCS for most teams and players. It's also not like anyone on Team Liquid was playing well either. You could actually make the case that it's between Core JJ and Santorin for who was the best player for Team Liquid this weekend. Comically enough, calling this Core JJ's worst weekend in years is insane praise, not flame. I would kill to have this be the worst one of my players look. Does Core JJ get overpraised by the casters and community? Maybe. I just don't think that this is the weekend to use as a compelling argument. The haters jumped the gun on this one. That's gonna do it for this week of the play. Thank you all so much for watching. The LCS is actually so fucking fun to watch right now. I would highly encourage everyone to tune in. I think the broadcast is getting better. There's a bunch of teams right now, all kind of in the middle where you're not quite sure how great they're gonna be. The games are back and forth. There's a lot of really cool picks going on. Despite the like slower meta, a lot of the games have turned out to be absolute bangers. I think the players, a lot of them are stepping up with the interviews and stuff. Zven's been great. Dokla's been incredible. I, I think all around, it's actually just a great time to be watching the LCS and I can't wait for week three. You know, sometimes when it's your job to do something and you can't figure out how to do it because you filmed so many outros over the years and now you're just awkwardly at the end of somebody's YouTube video and they're sitting there being like, is this really happening? Is he just saying he doesn't know what outro to do? Uh, well, if you're like that, then you might want to consider getting an Alienware computer uh, because if I had one in front of me right now, maybe I'd have like a script that I've written on it that would be something I could refer to instead of this weird ad lib thing that I'm doing right now. No, honestly, Alienware's got great stuff. We've been using everything that they create for years uh, for TGI. I can actually officially say that now because it's just been like literal years. There's two years that just now where I wasn't even out here and we were using their stuff to do remote interviews and it was awesome. Uh, they allow us to create wonderful 4K videos like this one and I really appreciate their support. So if you appreciate my videos, understand that we couldn't do it without them. So go check them out. There's a link in the description below.